Hello, and welcome back to Animatron Tutorials. For today's tutorial, I'll be covering some key components of basic animation, translation, rotation, and opacity. By combining these three basic animation techniques, we can create things like smoke, water, and even fire. But don't tell that to our caveman friend. He still has yet to master his campfire. After all he's been through from the last tutorial, let's try to raise his spirits by showing him there's still hope. First, we need something that resembles a puff of smoke, so let's start by using the brush tool to paint a few smoke clouds. By looking through your toolbar on the left edge of your browser, you can select the brush tool icon here. Hovering your mouse cursor over the brush icon will show you several different brush styles, offering you some more specific brush types. But for our smoke clouds, the standard brush will do just fine. Now, before we just start laying down paint, we should take a quick look at our brush options, here, at the top edge of our browser. This will allow us to change parameters such as color, opacity, and brush size. I'll create a new layer to begin testing, and then apply a quick brush stroke across the canvas. It appears as if my initial brush size is a bit too small, which is quickly fixed by holding left click over the brush size number and dragging to the right. Upon releasing left click, you should notice your brush stroke has changed according to the value you've applied. I'll make a few minor adjustments to our brush stroke size and smoothness to give it more of a cloud-like appeal. After applying a few quick shape changes, our smoke puff is still missing one thing, color. By clicking on the fill color in our options bar, a color chart appears with some base, gradient, and swatch colors for us to choose from. To save us some time, I've already made a smoky, gradient color swatch I'll apply by left-clicking on it from the swatch chart. So now that we have a relatively believable smoke cloud, we can finally begin animating it. I'll start by positioning it over my campfire, scaling it to size, and promptly naming my layer. With that taken care of, it's as easy as advancing our current time flag forward on the timeline, so we can set our first keyframe. Since our smoke starts at frame 0, we can imagine it taking about 3 seconds to rise from the campfire, so I'll advance my current time flag to the 3 second mark on the timeline. Now, I can move my smoke up to where I think it might get to before it dissipates. With my new keyframe set on the timeline, we can scrub through the animation and see our smoke cloud translate from start to finish. But this still doesn't have much character behind it yet. So let's add a few more translation keyframes to make it more fluid. By moving my current time flag along my existing animation, I can quickly make changes if necessary. Now that our smoke has some zigzag to it, let's add some rotations for more smoke-like behavior. With the movement taken care of, all that's left to adjust is the opacity of our smoke. By revisiting my previous keyframes, I can make my opacity changes as needed using the value slider up in the options bar. Each value change is keyframed automatically, allowing us to view the resulting animation on playback. So, having just finished our first smoke cloud, it only makes sense to add a bit of variety by simply duplicating it and adjusting the timing and values for better appeal. Now, Let's see what happens when our caveman finally gets a whiff of our newly added smoke clouds. Seems like our caveman friend is getting closer to his dream of fire. Find out what happens by joining me for the next Animatron Tutorial.